my opponent steps toward me with a straight punch to my face. So what I'm going to do is use Bong Sao, wing arm, to deflect the incoming punch. Now Wu Sao, protective hand, acts as a backup for my Bong Sao, but from this point I go to Lin Lop Sao, or cross grabbing hand, I go around and come in with a back fist to the head. So flowing right through that, Bong Sao, Lop Sao, Kwa Choi, or back fist to the head. The punch comes in, you meet it, that's one beat. You grab, that's two beats. You fire your back fist, that's three beats, okay? So first, it's a three beat movement. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, then we cut it down to a two beat movement. One, two. One, two. And then eventually, try for a one beat movement. So the movement's cut down from three distinctive moves, one, two, three, to two moves, one, two, to eventually one move, so one beat. If I were deflecting a punch with a bong sao, which is a wing arm movement or elbow and air hand like this, one, I always back this up with wu sao or protective hand here. Now the idea behind the bong sao is I get what we call the cutting angle and I deflect the punch when it comes in, I deflect it off on an angle. Now this hand being right here, this structure is very important because one, I have this hand on the center line. So if he tries to fire immediately with his other hand, I have a hand there that will pick that up. So my structure for that first shot, if he tries to shoot another one, I'm waiting there to take it. I could also just go simply boom, boom, right there. Okay, but that woo hand, that backup hand, is right there backing up that bong sao. Now, when I do this bong sao, you heard me refer to what I call a cutting angle. Okay, this is the angle on the arm. Notice the elbow's up, the wrist is down. This is what deflects the punch. If I do not do this properly, what I do is give him a runway right into my face. The idea is for me to angle just enough to turn this into this. Okay, and the only thing I did to make that happen was change the angle of my arm. I went from a flat line parallel with the floor to an angle here, and that deflects the punch. This acting as the backup, I go immediately for my grab and hit with my back fist. There's all kind of arguments about a lop sow. What is a lop sow? What isn't a lop sow? What does a lop sow consist of? Some people will tell you that when you lop, do not commit the thumb and actually fully grab. Okay, I did a lot of research on this. I've noticed that when I actually grab somebody and I put a little bit of a twist in it as I lop, it totally destroys the opponent's structure. Now, feeling this, I went back and I, I did a lot of research. I looked at every picture I could find of Bruce Lee executing a lop sow, and never was there a time when he was like this with an uncommitted thumb. Every time the thumb is committed to the grab. So when we execute the lop sow, it's a full grab. Now when I grab with that, it's predominantly these two fingers and the thumb, okay? These two kind of stay loose in the grip. This is another thing I learned from analysis of Bruce Lee's movements, is that as he tightened the noose, which means going down the forearm to the smallest point at the wrist, he wasn't fully committing these two fingers. The way we look at this is the more you commit, 
the more you have to uncommit to complete a movement. So we look at this as being uh, unnecessary movement to just fully grab like this because if I fully grab here, I've got to release that full grab. But if I'm here with these two fingers already away from the arm and relaxed, if I want to hit from there, if I want to move right off of that, it's very easy to do because I'm not fully committed.